Richard, you're with us. I hope you don't have to do a sign language today. Yes, I'm with you. Uh, I hope my internet is going to hold. Um, let me share my screen. Yeah, perfect. Richard, I think as I mentioned, is gonna to talk to us about the transition work that is going on at the moment for South Sudan POC. Okay, oh, I don't know if you're able to see my screen. Are you able to see one? Okay, very yes. good. Um, let me see if I can make also uh, full view. Full view. Oh. Okay, very good. Um, I'm going to lead you to the transition of the protection of civilian sites to a conventional IDP camp. I don't know how many of you are aware of the South Sudan context. When displacement happened, uh, people ran into the U uh, UN peacekeeping compound. So they created that kind of a site, a camp within the peacekeeping mission. So and then the mission took up the, the de facto role of camp administration since 2013 up to this date. So they're in the process of handing over their, their role to the national authority. Um, so I want to take you to some key context and also the timeline that uh, why are they handing over now the, the, the protection of civilian sites to the national authority. There was a peace agreement that was signed in 2018. And since that time, I think the, the peace seemed to be holding. Uh, there was also a formation of the, the government of national unity seems to be holding. And then it also happened that uh, there was a need to renew the mandate of the UNMIS, United Nations Mission in South Sudan uh, in 2019. And it was required that they, after renewal of their mandate, they need to provide a written report to the Security Council after 180 days. So this was a very consultative process. UNMIS involved all humanitarian. There's a working group that was formed that involved the humanitarian and the mission. And we did the, the report and was presented to the Security Council. And then based on that, the Security Council again asked the UNMISH to come up with the plan, the future plan of the protection of civilian site. And uh, we developed uh, the system cluster, we developed a guidance note. We were calling it a phase out guidance note and the checklist that was uh, highlighting what need to take place if you're thinking of uh, transitioning or when you're phasing out, because there's a, a very big fear among the population. Uh, they're saying we ran away from the national authority, we ran away from the government, and now you want the government to take the control of the camp administration. So this guidance note was to, to highlight some of the key issues that need to be addressed when we're talking of the phase out. We also cognizant that uh, this fear of the unknown may force some people to, to return. Uh, this was adopted, uh, but uh, it wasn't used so much. And then um, some, some position papers were also uh, produced by NRC, Oxfam, uh, NGO Forum, talking about the the development of the, the, the POC, what uh, they think will really happen when uh, the UNMIS will pull out. Then COVID also came in, that was the early this year, and that made some movement of IDP comes from the POC to possibly urban areas and, and return, return areas. There was a big fear because the POC is um, really overcrowded. And when you talk about uh, keeping social distance, you have a family living in uh, a three by five square meters, a family of seven. So keeping social distance, should anybody within the family contract uh, COVID would really be very difficult. So people were scared. Uh, good enough, uh, the, the rate of trans, uh, transmission of COVID was not so much. And then uh, um, based on the development that UNMIS has been seeing, there hasn't been uh, serious physical threats to, 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 to the people in the POC. They started the, what they call the, the, the posturing, 
removing the United Police from guarding, from manning the watchtowers, pulling them out, reducing the, the force protection. And then this has run for almost one month. And then uh, they did the security risk assessment, uh, did, uh, and did not see any sign that uh, they said physical threat, uh, threatening people inside the POC. So briefly, that is the, the background and the context. Uh, we, we, there are two terms that we need to be clear of. There is a resignation uh, that Unmis keeps talking about. And they say it's the removing of their privileges from the protection of civilian society and handing over uh, that mandate to the national authority. We shall share this uh, presentation to you. I'm not going to go through all these other, what uh, the government of Sudan need to do and what the mission will continue to do. But, but that's what it is. Once they have signed the MOU with the national government, that means the protection of civilian site name changes to the conventional IDP camp. And as we speak now, uh, two of the protection of civilian sites have changed, the MOU has been signed, but to, although we have not seen a clear distinction uh, between the POC and the IDP camp because the national authority hasn't yet taken up the, the, the responsibility, camp administration responsibility. Then we have this term transition. Uh, I, I was trying to look at it in the, the, the English dictionary. That's how it defines it. Uh, and in South Sudan, what we see is should be a process of coaching or working together with the national authority on the role that the mission has been playing. And when they see that they are, they are able to, to handle those roles very well, that's when the designation should have taken place. Um, so it's good for us to, to understand these two terms because it's, we, it's not even clear here in South Sudan. Well, people are talking of transition, designation, and they, they, they're mixing the two. And then the process. The process, as I mentioned earlier on, security risk assessment, protection assessment, then conflict analysis, or conflict uh, sensitivity assessment, uh, then coming up with the transitional plan. And the plan should embrace both UNMIS and the humanitarian, what they want to do together with the national authority and should be able to give a timeline that beginning from January until April, this is our transition, then eventually uh, a designation should take place. Uh, but uh, this was not followed chronologically. Uh, you find the designation has taken place and now we're coming up with the transition plan. I've just been in a meeting uh, uh, before this and I was asking them, what are we transitioning to when we know this uh, POC has already been designated? So, but um, by and large, we've done most of this uh, uh, transition process and its ongoing activity. And uh, I mentioned about the coordination structure at the national level. I don't have a point uh, to, to, to indicate, but you have the UNMIS uh, HCT task team. This is the body that is uh, planning for the designation. The membership is of course UNSCR, IOM, OCHA and WFP. And of course, the two clusters, protection cluster and uh, CCM cluster, and also representation from the NGO forum. And of course, we have the office of the uh, secretary general representative. And uh, another humanitarian arm of the mission is RRP, relief, uh, rehabilitation and protection, that we have a bi-weekly meeting, ensuring that the plan is done, all these other activities is taking place at the national level, then we push it to either send it to ICCG when we need action from other clusters, or we send it to HCT when we need the decision, or the UN uh, senior management group. Um, activities that need to be done at the site level is the, done by camp management. And of course, at the site level, the coordination, the planning is called camp management and UNMIS, 
represented by RRP, Relief, Rehabilitation and Protection. Uh, we've uh, developed a number of documents uh, in the process. I talked about the guidance note with a checklist that would lead to the development of the action planning. And of course, uh, this MOU, Memorandum of Understanding that has been signed between the UNMIS and the government. And then uh, RRC is the Relief Rehabilitation Commission, which is the humanitarian arm of the national government of South Sudan. And the UNMIS, uh, South Sudan National Police. We asking them to have a focal point or camp focal point or camp in charge. So they, they need to have appointment letter to have an interlocutor that humanitarians are going to interlocute with on a day-to-day -day, uh, business of the IDP camp. Uh, in one location, this has already taken place, but others, uh, it hasn't. Uh, and of course, it's a, it's a process that we, we need to, to keep engaging with the national authority and bring them on board. Of course, there's a work plan jointly developed by UNMIS and the humanitarian and also community engagement plan. Uh, because the biggest problem that we have is the fear of, from the community. Because now they, they, they've been seeing UNMIS as the protector, but now they're pulling out, they're withdrawing. So this engagement plan has some key messages. UNMIS saying, no, we are not withdrawing. We're only extending our mandate to cover the entire country. We've been spending our forces, 60% of our forces has been stagnant within the POC. But now we have seen that there's no imminent threat to you in the POC. We want to extend this mandate. So we shall continue to do the patrol. We shall continue to escort the women when they're going to collect firewood. So this is a kind of confidence building and it is, of course, community engagement is not just a one day activity. It's a process that takes long for people to change their perception and what. We have also using the camp, uh, I mean, the system framework, we've come up with uh, camp administration roles and responsibility. We adopted this from the system framework and they're very key, about seven or six, dealing with the the daily, the day-to-day -day administrative oversight of the camp, uh, not to come up with a whole junk of uh, terms of reference, because in the beginning, uh, we are not very clear, say, oh, let's come up with an SOP, let's come with uh, terms of reference. And this was not very useful because, I mean, the national authority should take up their constitutional responsibility and be responsible for the protection of their citizen. So we've just reduced this to about the seven key points. And then when we're having the meeting with them, we say, okay, these are our expectations as you take up this new role. And they can, in one location, they've really embraced it and then we'll be able to identify the protection uh, capacity gaps and uh, how to support them. Uh, these are the milestones, what has already taken place. I said two sites have already been designated, a site called BOR, uh, one you know BOR and a few people who have been to South Sudan and wow, they are now uh, normal or conventional IDP camp. The next is, uh, is Juba, we've been having a meeting this morning talking about Juba and engaging with the national authority. And maybe in the middle of this month, Juba will be designated and the next will be Bentiu. Malakal will still stay because of the ongoing conflict within the, within the state, but also that uh, the, the state government has not been formed. Although the formation of the government of national unity has taken place and governors have been appointed, but for Malakal, there's no government. There's nobody to work with. Um, Richard, um, yeah, I'm just going to warn you that you have a minute to go, just in case you have other key messages in your presentation. Okay, these are the key messages. The learning, I think we, 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 we started from Z to go to A, instead of starting from A going to Z. All those beautiful activities I've listed down, we did not follow them chronologically. We started from there going to here. So it's a, a benefit to the locations that we have not yet designated, like Bentiu and Malakal, and we want to do it properly so that we have something learned from South Sudan. At the end of the day, when we've designated all the POCs, we shall share with you some, some learning. But also, 
uh, we're saying here it's too early to judge whether we'll fail or we'll succeed it because we're all learning. This is the first, thing, first time we're, we're, we work with the, the UN as peacekeepers, being Kamba administration, and then transitioning to the national government. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you so much, Richard. And, and thank you for, for rushing that last bit. I also shared the link to um, CCCM Costa uh, South Sudan page as well in the chat, if you would like to find out more. Um, we definitely have a couple of countries that are coming up with the same challenges and, and, and activities, I think, in planning and implementing transition and, and nexus. Um, next Monday, we're gonna have a panel discussion around this topic um, during 